Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good Speed Weeks here in Daytona. I'm Adam Alexander with NASCAR on Fox, and we're here today to announce our broadcast lineup in the Xfinity Series booth for 2020. And I guess our panel kind of gives it away, but I'll introduce everyone and tell you what they'll be doing in the season ahead. First up, the Hall of Famer Cup champion Tony Stewart, who will join us for the first time. He'll be in the booth at Talladega with Clint Boyer, who has taken on a much larger role in 2020 with us. In addition to nine Xfinity races, he will also be in the booth for our coverage of the Gander Trucks, and we will announce that schedule at a later time. Kurt Busch is back with us. He did a, a race a season ago. He's been in our Gander Trucks booth a couple of times. But the big one for Kurt, when we go to Bristol, Tennessee, <laughs> In the spring, he will be in the booth with younger brother Kyle. And they both, as we all know, have had a great deal of success there. And on the far side, Brad Keselowski, who's been with us uh, doing these races since 2015. And Brad will be a part of our opener on Saturday with Clint, as we call the first Xfinity race of the season. Uh, Time out. Yeah. Did, did you that really didn't last long. <laughs> say that both Bush brothers are going to be in the booth That's together? That's exactly what I said. And I, if we, we want to go, can you be wide, our producer that day? I will. I, please, <laughs> please let me be the producer. Most famous I introduced life. myself as Adam Who Alexander. Who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> I think I'm quickly going to become, oh, by the way, instead of Adam <laughs> Alexander with this cast of characters that we have in the booth. As many of you know, uh, we've been doing NASCAR for 20 years at Fox, and we're excited to celebrate that this weekend as we begin our 20th season. Uh, but we've been doing the Xfinity Series since 2015. And this was a concept that came to us from our president, Eric Shanks, who said, let's put Michael and uh, Michael Waltrip and Adam in the booth, and we'll bring up a cup driver every week. And it's <laughs> serious talking to you, Tony. That's we got to be my first ex-wife, actually. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, at really Talladega, close, by the way. It's, a, it's a big booth, so you can bring all your girlfriends if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a booth. <laughs> But we started doing this in 2015, and uh, I think Brad and Clint, Kevin Harvick, uh, Joey Logano were, were some of the first drivers to come up and join us on a regular basis. In 2017, we went to drivers only for one race a year. We did that at Pocono uh, in 17 and 18 at Talladega, and last year at Charlotte. So this is a program that has continued to evolve. We're doing drivers only again this year. Once again, we'll be at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, Clint's going to be in the booth with Joey and uh, Kevin Harvick will come back and serve as our play-by-play -play man. On pit road, we welcome Daniel Suarez for the first time. He will join us at Charlotte with uh, Bubba Wallace and also Ryan Blaney. And in the studio that weekend will be Chad Knaus with Brad and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So I think we've covered all the bullet points. We'll put a, a press release out in just a moment. First though, some questions for these guys. Tony, can you give us a a bit of a preview of what Talladega will be like with you and Clint side by side in the booth. It very well could be the longest day of my life. Because <laughs> the, the Clint portion of this program got added late after I already agreed to this. <laughs> I'm fairly certain somebody lied to me and said, well, this is who you're going to be with. And in all, reality, part out. in all reality, they already had him booked for that slot. <laughs> and... Uh, so we, I can promise you we will have a lot of fun up there for sure. It's, um, you know, we have a lot of fun working with him anyway. Now you're going to put us in a TV booth together, and I'm sure we'll – I don't know how who pays the FCC fines or whatever, but I'm not paying them. So we'll take it out of his paycheck if we have to, but uh, we'll, we'll have a good time. It, it'll be fun. It's – um, you know, it's – it'll be – I have used to do some of this stuff in the past and, and kind of got out of doing TV stuff because of – wanting to be a full-time race car driver so um but i'm gonna get get a start at it again and, and start doing some again so uh you know doing it with clint at talladega will be a lot of fun and uh you know it's who knows you never know what's going to happen at a researcher plate race anyway so uh we're not going to know what's going to happen on the track and we're damn sure not going to know what's going to happen in the booth so that ought to be pretty exciting it will be unpredictable for sure clint you're taking on an expanded role with fox this year in addition to the the broadcast stuff you'll do more time spent on race hub why the move to do more tv this year i think you know the ease of our schedules a little bit on saturday was a big part of that uh, you know i love this sport i love being able to uh to you know sell the sport talk about the sport and bench race you know i think that uh 
you know, the opportunity to go up in the booth a couple of years ago was so much fun for me, and it, it just, you know, you, you sit there, and you're, you're up there with you, Adam, and you're, you're taking in this race, and I think we all have a pretty unique perspective that we can bring to the table for a fan, and, uh, you know, you see that with everybody. Um, Brad is, is uh, you know, his personality and his perspective on it is certainly probably different than mine, and, <laughs> and this Bush combination is going to be epic. Um, <laughs> and certainly, I can tell you, this wild man is going to have a lot of fun at Talladega, but that, that's what's cool about this opportunity for me is to be able to continue to be a part of this sport and, and to, uh, you know, that's the thing. On Saturdays, people don't know this about me on the weekends. My favorite thing to do is get on a golf cart and figure it out. You know, see what how a fan takes this sport, and and uh, and I love that about it. So you know, to be able to to call some of these Xfinity races, some truck races, and then you know, obviously talk about it, uh, you know, throughout the week on Race Hub is going to be a lot of fun. Bristol will be fun with the Bush brothers. So Kurt, we we kind of know the rivalry that exists between you and Kyle. Will there be some trash talk before he comes up and joins us in the TV booth? I mean, already I mean, he couldn't show up for the press conference, so <laughs> I'm already a lap ahead. Uh, it's going to be fun. The, the, the sibling rivalry between us has been genuine over the years. Uh, it was very uh, unique in the beginning with uh, our racing, but now as we've both mellowed a little bit, can I, can I say that? Is that fact or is that just opinion? We're going to have fun together in the booth going back and forth, and it's our favorite track, Bristol Motor Speedway. And the way that Fox presented this offer to me was, would you be okay with calling a race with your little brother in the booth? And I said, Absolutely. So for me, this came together last minute, um, and there's a couple other races that will be added in. And again, it's just giving that perspective, uh, like Clint saying, from Tony's perspective, from Brad's perspective, uh, to be able to give what we've done in the car for so many years to our fans from the booth, uh, it immediately resonates through my mind to, to try to live up to the expectations of what Mike Joy, Daryl Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, and all of them have done over the years. So maybe, maybe Jeff Gordon. Don't try to live up to Mike Joy. Oh, We're Mike going to be big trouble. I didn't yeah. even know Mike was here. We can handle Jeff Gordon. Oh, Mike Joy, perfect. no chance. <laughs> Terrible goal. We won't reach that one. We'll just work our way up. But no, it's going to be fun. Can't wait to, to get in the booth and, and do it with Kyle and other races as well. So I think there's three truck races I'm going to throw in there. That's right. Yeah, you'll be a part of that truck broadcast as well. Brad, you have been a part of the family, I feel like, for quite some time doing races dating back to, to 2015 and also someone we see regularly during the week on NASCAR Race Hub. What do you learn on Saturday when you're calling an Xfinity race that maybe can, can carry over a little bit to the race car on Sunday? Yeah, you know, I, there's certainly a lot to be learned in this sport. Every day the rules are changing, it feels like, <laughs> and the, the tracks are changing a little bit with different things they do. And it seems like there's, a, you know, tons of little nuances that, that really make this sport go around. And I think that's why it's so hard to be a newcomer and be so successful in it. Uh, but with that in mind, I, I, I love doing the TV, even if I don't get anything out of it competitive-wise. I think it's a great opportunity to uh, spread the gospel of, of motorsport uh, to our fans, whether they're you know current fans or hopefully even new fans, um, and I, what I really like about uh, you know Fox specifically with this driver lineup is that it is a whole different cast of characters, and and that's great on a couple different levels. One because it's it's not overly burdensome for us, but also I think it, it gives the fans or viewers at home an opportunity to to see the race through different perspectives as we all do. And uh, I think that uh, can be really healthy for them as well and, and really fun. Can, can I steal one of your quotes, Brad? Because I think if we put on a billboard at Talladega, Tony Stewart spreading the gospel of NASCAR, that would really go places. What do you think, <laughs> Tony? If you put me in a, like, a robe or something and put me on a billboard and put that, it'll be, it'll be impactful. All right, we'll work on that. Please not do that. Uh, let's open it up for questions. Uh, yeah, Jordan, go ahead. Don't be scared, my we'll son. get a mic to you and uh, fire away. <laughs> Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Tony, presumably you've had offers like this before to join the booth. Uh, why now? Why say yes? What, what compelled you to do this? Well, I didn't do it before because I can't even tie a tie. So, And they all want you to wear a tie up there and get dressed up, and that's not my favorite thing. But it, it's, it, it worked out in my schedule. I mean, I'm still going to – I'm going to be racing that night in, I think, Tennessee with my sprint car. But, um, you know, it's just working out scheduling-wise. I mean, I'm starting to – not trying to run absolutely every race I can run. So uh, we're, we're cutting back on some of my sprint car races this year, and, and I've opened up some opportunities to, to finally do some of this stuff. And, you know, I'll watch enough YouTube videos. I'll figure out how to tie a tie when, when, you, when I need to. We'll help you with that. Thanks. I appreciate <laughs> Clip on. Clip on. Yeah. There we go. 
uh, Louis Frank of Reuters. We're going to stick with Tony. We oh. know your love of, of restrictor plate or tapered spacer tracks. Did Talladega choose you or did you choose Talladega? Uh, Talladega chose me, and I'm fine with it as long as I don't have to be on the track. So being up in a booth away from all of it, I'll be perfectly fine doing that. Yep, right back here. Jacob Zielman, Speed Sport. Tony's very popular today. I'll continue the trend. Um, <laughs> Don't mat me, baby. I'm ready. Do this full time. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned that you had done a little bit of this before. Was this something that Fox came to you for? Did you have the idea and kind of broach it with them? I mean, what was the process behind getting you back involved in this again? Uh, Fox came to us, and, and you know, we we obviously had a great relationship with Fox while, while I was racing, so... Uh, you know, it, it was offered when I retired, but, you know, like I said, I was really more interested in getting back to dirt racing and, and driving race cars again. So, um, you know, like I said, now that the schedule, they, they came to us this year and, you know, brought it back up and asked if we'd be interested. And we looked at the time frames and what races they were uh, interested in. We found one that would still fit in my schedule and let me do what I want to do in the evening, but uh, go to work for them during the day. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, like all three of these guys have mentioned, I mean, the, the fun part is, uh, you know, they always wonder what we're thinking when we're inside the race car. So now, even though we're not inside the car, we, we, we can tell them our perspective of what we see and what we think and what we're looking for uh, and, and give you an idea of what those guys in the car, what we think they're thinking as well. So it, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a good time. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires.net. And, you know, there's a whole generation of younger guys coming up. Is this an audition for a uh, retirement gig for any of y'all, uh, you know, to go into TV? No, I think this, you know, and that's a good question, but no, uh, this is an opportunity. You look at our Saturdays, you know, qualifying is eased up. That's our schedules is a lot easier than it once was. And, and this is, gives me an opportunity to be able to give back. And, and that's what I want to do. Um, you know, if we're racers, man, we don't, if we get up and, and, and somebody's eating breakfast, so you're not going to have breakfast with him, but like maybe a brunch or a lunch, <laughs> you're talking racing. Like we don't do anything else. That's what we talk about. That's our language. That's the only thing we speak. That's our gospel. So to be able to. It's all this gospel he stuff. He brought today. it up and then you brought it up. I didn't it's need like a robe to, to, to tell you. Your turn, Kurt. Gospel. I'm going to go read the rule is, book. It's an opportunity to continue to stay, you know, bench racing and talk about the things that we love to talk about. I think the timing is right for a lot of us. Like Clint's saying, with the Saturday schedule uh, in, in the Cup Series, we're majority of the weekends just doing one or two laps of qualifying. And uh, with the opportunity to, to showcase our sport to a new group of fans and also take care of our veteran fans, this group right here can connect to the, well, Stewart can, especially to the early 90s, you know, when he was coming up racing. And for us to be able to. where your bus is parked. <laughs> And I'll be up later than you. <laughs> you definitely are up late. Uh, for us to just connect uh, with as many different directions, many different ways as possible. You know, I think, you know, to answer your, your question, I, I would look at this not from that perspective, but from the perspective that, you know, we've all been given so much by motorsports. You know, there's thousands, probably tens or hundreds of thousands of, of racers out there that dream of being where we're at. And so we have a tremendous platform to, uh, you know, help, car help carry on the, the legacy of the sport. And, you know, where we got today is from those before us and so they paved a path for us and you know if paving the path for future generations is, is being in a booth that's great I don't I'm not personally looking at it as a you know retirement audition as much as uh, you know part of all of our responsibilities to give back to the sport that's given so much to us you know there, there's 40 some drivers uh, that get to compete at this level the cup level and uh, you know all of us are or have been fortunate enough to be one of those drivers and uh, that, that's the rarity. That's the exception, right? There's thousands more worldwide that would, would love to be in our position. So, you know, it, it's, it's all of our responsibility to give back to the sport in, in some way, shape, or form. And you, know, you try to be judicious with, with how you do that. But uh, this seems like a great way to do it. And, and Fox has been so generous to do it at a really high level to where it feels like it's impactful. Um, so that it's a good use of right, our time. we got to go to commercial break. No, but I think to echo that, I think it also, you know, the Xfinity Series is a stepping stone of our sport. We all use that stepping stone to get to this opportunity in Cup. So to be able to go back and sell the story of the Xfinity Series, these new kids coming up through the ranks, that's important. And I think, uh, you know, to Brad's point, that's, that's how we're helping is, is be able to tell their story and who's the next guy coming. Yeah, and, and even bigger than that, I, I think it's – something that if you think about the entertainment industry and how you know all pro sports you know 
have had their struggles in the last you know, three to five years. This is something that Fox has done that where they've thought outside the box and thought, how can we do something different mm -hmm. that's going to get people more engaged and, and, and you know, get them watching more? And so I, I think it was a pretty brilliant deal for Fox to come up with this idea and concept and, you know, having drivers do a whole race. I mean, you're not going to be better than these guys are. I mean, that's why they're here, too. I mean, they're the best of the best. But to do something different, I mean, that, that gets people's attention you don't think people are going to tune in just to see what two bush brothers are going to say to each other the whole they might even not even watch the race <laughs> they, but they'll listen to it they're going to listen to the race no matter what but that's that's how brilliant fox is about thinking outside the box and how do we how do we entertain people other than just showing them a race which we've been doing for decades now i mean how do we show them something different and bring a, a different entertainment package to them that they haven't seen or heard before so it, it's it's a really brilliant idea on their part to do all this we got Claire Kelly, and then right back here. Go ahead, Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. When you guys first did TV, did you learn a lot about uh, what you didn't know about doing television when you were down just racing cars? Can you talk about that? And then are you able to be up there saying what you want about who's racing on the track and being wide open? The, the hardest thing for me is when you have that earpiece in, there's already enough voices in my head, mm. as is. <laughs> and then to have one that's added in that I'm supposed to follow that makes it tough, but there's the teamwork aspect Shanks of it. Really working. That I, <laughs> <laughs> the teamwork aspect of it is what I really enjoyed. When you have the producer that you can't see but you hear, and you get a, a read off of that person, you know, with Adam Alexander as the anchor that's cut into commercials and getting in the sponsor plugs that have been bought and paid for, and then there's. You know, Brad can go on for a good six minutes about somebody blocking at a restricted <laughs> player. <laughs> and yet we only have I'll like be on tomorrow, <laughs> Saturday. We only have like 30 live seconds. On Fox. Here's the biggest thing. I've done a, a Talladega race, and you have a lap time at Talladega. And then I've done a Martinsville race. That lap time is only 16 seconds or 22 seconds. It, it, so it, dramatic differences just in one racetrack versus another. It's a lot of fun, and it's a, it's a fun challenge. I think the other thing that's hard – is our minds are trained to look ahead, right? We're constantly looking ahead and watching a guy set somebody up, knowing what he's thinking, what he's fixing to encounter, going into maybe a lap, a lap car or something like that. And all the while, you're, you're there, you're seeing it, and you're, you're trying to talk, and Adam's trying to get a plug in. That's the hardest thing for me is I'm like, ah, they, 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 Hurry up! Get, don't do it, you know that. For me, right, you just get, to translate what he's trying to say is... We, we, oh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm How serious. Like we, things happen so fast in the car from our perspective that you see that happening, and, and you know you're starting to, to go down that mindset all the while, trying you know trying to take care of business. It's uh, and the other thing is the appreciation for, and I'm not at all bragging, but this guy leading the charge, keeping us under control is yeah. one thing, but making sure that it's on a timely manner, Pam in your ear is exceptional and, and the camera guys it's the whole engine is is pretty remarkable and, and until you get in that booth and see it uh you just don't realize it kelly crandall racer.com kurt so bristol is perfect for you and kyle how special how much fun will it be for you to be able to be in the booth and share your love of that track and then provide only insight you know you and kyle can with the success you've both had there yeah, it's our favorite track, um, you know, for me to have the wins and Kyle's wins. It, it's a track that spoke to us early in our career, and that's how this opportunity came together. It just seemed organic from Fox. Hey, let's get both Bush brothers in at Bristol, and then things blossom from there. But, you know, when you see guys on TV calling races or even, you know, like Troy Aikman in football, he's the best at predicting what's coming up next. And, it's going to be fun for Kyle and I. That was back. Romo. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, both of them are pretty good. But Aikman, yeah. Romo, the gang that, uh, that, that you see from the field to the booth, that's where Kyle and I are going to be going back and forth, and we'll probably get lost in Bush translation at some point on what we both think needs to happen, and that's part of the, the fun of it all. David, that was wrong. Cowboy. David Smith, The Athletic. Uh, I want to put your chops to the test right now. There's been a lot of talk this week about bad blocks, Late blocks. Take but it away, Brad. I, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> That's a wrap. Check the gates. <laughs> I'm curious for, for someone watching at home, how would you articulate how to execute a clean block, a fair block? I feel like everybody's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> a shocker. Um, Got an ambulance handy? Say what? 
An ambulance. Not an ambulance. No, no, I don't need any more this week. Uh, well, shoot, if I got to take it, I got to take it. I mean, I'm, I'm not like Wordsmith Tony over here, uh, but, you know, uh, you're definitely going to see that Saturday in the Xfinity race. Uh, there's my Fox plug. I'm trying to help you out here, Adam and Megan. But, you know, I, I think that the, the racing is certainly always evolving and, and will continue to evolve. That's what makes it special is, uh, you know, what you saw 10 years ago is probably not what you're going to see 10 years from now and, and certainly not what you're going to see today. Um, and, you know, the driver tactics are one of those things that evolve. And, you know, I think we've seen the, the, the plate racing change to where, you know, it used to be you came to Daytona and the track was so rough and bumpy, you know, you could bump somebody, but if you tried to push them, the cars would bounce up and down so bad that, you know, you'd, you'd about be like a forklift picking them up. But, uh, you know, now that's not the case. And, and so that's certainly changed some of the tactics because it's harder to be spun out than, you know, Tony probably and these guys know with the, the older cars before the track was repaved. I didn't, I didn't get to run it, but uh, it, it, was hard, it was easier to spin out then. And it's harder to spin out now, but that just means we hit each other harder and, and get back to whatever that limit is because as race car drivers, that's what we do. We look for the limit and we push right to it. Um, and so, you know, the blocking tactics have evolved with that. And, you know, I think a lot of the, the issues that have happened here in the last few speed weeks or even at the plate tracks have come from the fact that the the TV coverage itself is so darn good that people watch the races and, or, you know, sp specific people are watching the races that drive the cars and they see moves at work and, and they try to replicate them and, you know, they can't, they're not, they're not there. Um, and, and that's, that's part of it. So, uh, you know, with respect to that, I think we'll always see it continuing to evolve. And I think there's a lot of factors that have added into it, but, uh, you know, if, if you're making a block that, causes you or the guy behind you to wreck, I would say that's probably not a very good block, uh, you know, when, when someone's uh, going to the care center. At the end of the day, you block because it works, and it works until it doesn't. And that's the only unfortunate difference between one that works and one that doesn't is a crash. Uh, it's successful until it's not, and then you're the bad guy. You've wrecked the whole field because it was an untimely block, and you wrecked everybody. But if you didn't, you should have, and you're going to lose the race. So it's a tricky thing to judge, and as it's evolved, to Brad's point, it puts you on the spot, and it's do or die, and it's a decision that has to be made that fast. That was good. I thought you were going to yep. say something. Got one back here. Maybe got time for one or two more. Uh, Tony or any one of you good gentlemen sitting up there, I've always wanted to ask this question. On the last lap, if you're among those cars, is there a specific position on the track that you would rather be or not be? I, I would pick first all day long. I mean, oh, she comes out here, you, you never know. Yeah, and Clint just brought up perfect. Cool. Man, I mean, for, he's a lot smarter, I guess, than I thought he was here. He's, he's saying some <laughs> smart stuff up here. But like you just mentioned, if a caution comes out and you're leading, you know, because something happens behind you, um, you know, as, as far as whether you're talking about a particular lane or something, it's so hard because none of the scenarios are ever the same. They're always different. It's it's all about what guys are behind you pushing. Um, you know, I guarantee you on the last lap, you're going to block no matter what. I don't care how many lanes are coming, you're going to try to pick the lane that's going to get to you first and try to stop that momentum. Uh, and li like they mentioned, you're going to have to do that. So, um, you know, I, I'd always rather be in the front versus, you know, the last place you want to be is in the back because there's a really good possibility something's going to happen on that last lap and you'll probably get caught up in it. Yeah, definitely wait until that, you know, you have to be in the lead. You cross the, the white flag, the race is over if the caution comes out and, you know, if you're sitting around there for that last corner slingshot, you don't know if that's going to, you know, transpire or not. You don't know if somebody's going to side draft off. If you pull off the guy behind you, you lose your help. He goes with somebody else, goes with one of his teammates. There's just too many variables. So, I, you know, no different than any other race, I believe. you got to be in the lead always. Yeah, it's, it's being in the lead. I think it gives you the best percentage chance to control the outcome. Uh, researched a bunch of plate races. Brad's won a ton of races by being in the lead when that final yellow came out. Uh, but then again, I was leading a ton at Talladega um, two Octobers ago, and I ran out of gas coming to take the checkered because I had led too much and towed the train and burned up my fuel compared to my other teammates. I liked what they said. That was really <laughs> good.
<laughs> Anybody else? One last question we have time for. Anybody got a question? Last question. All right. That's going to do it. Brad, Kurt, Clint, Tony, thank you thank for you. coming. We look forward to the year, and we look forward to the coverage this weekend on Fox and FS1. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>